Yo, Marcus Bronzy here from How To Kill An Hour, and today it's time for another episode of What's In The Box. Today's episode, we are looking at some camping equipment. I've done a lot of outside cooking this summer. I've reviewed a few bits of camping stuffs, ovens. This is supposed to be a good all-round party grill. I've not been sent this by the company. I actually bought this myself. So uh, let's see what's in the box. That's what you see when you open it up. That's what's in there. So in it, we should have a lid, a griddle. Let's see if we've got it. In this, we should have a lid, which is what we have here. A lid. This is a bag for it all to go in. I can't even saw fits in the bag. I guess the best time for us to test that would be now, actually. Get it out. There's little things for it to connect to. Oh, wicked. Already looking quite smart. Right, let's see if it fits in the bag. I feel like I put it in the wrong way around. There's a little bit in the bag. For the little nose here. It's the bag. Not very protective, but good for carrying it around. Probably wouldn't say it's something that is good to take on a hike because you've got to carry it. It's not like an over the shoulder oven like similar ones we've tested in the past. More like you can put it in a bag to put it in the car. Because I wouldn't want to carry that bag for a long time. Anyway, back to what's in it. We should have a lid or a wok. The griddle, which I think is the skillet bit of it. Double check. Double check all the parts, mate. B -b 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 -b. That is it, yes. The griddle, which has got the camping tag. Zagaz logo on it as well, griddle on one side, flat plate on the other, so a nice bit of veg there or some when you want to get those nice grilled marks on your food. That's what you get right there. Number three, I'm supposed to be expecting the grid. There you go. Grid. Bit of protective doodle. This one is the heat distributor, or is it? I don't know, is it? Is it? No, this. Yeah, this is the heat distributor. This distributes the heat. Next is the pan support. I don't even know how this all works, gets together right now. And here we've got Some legs. These have got to be the legs, which are three screw on legs. Two screw on, which are like hard plastic on the bottom, and screw bits at the top. I'll get them out because we're going to put this together today. These are some handles. We're going to attach on. They've got little screws on them, so I don't really want to be messing around and uh, taking them out until I need to put them on. Another handle there. Oh, the bag's open. The screws are already on this one. Okay, noted. Inside, have a look there. You can see Campinga's logo. It's there. The bottom, that's where you put the gas on. So we're putting the gas on. 
and that's where you pop in the legs. And then I guess this is where, so we turn the gas on. Ooh, got a spark as well, so we can spark it up, baby. Don't need any hatches. And that's it, All right. Oh, we also need one more thing to get it going, which is, which is gas. Please bear in mind that gas might take a little longer to come than other things that you might order off the internet because to transport gas, it ain't as safe as transporting non-gas items. You can buy them in fours. I think I've got four for about 15 English quid. I've got 15 English pounds. And we're using that 470 CV plus camping gas, gas. Got four of these. Um, I'll make sure that I put the burn time in the description or up on screen now what you can expect out of one of these. And this cooker, I'll pop those away. I guess it's time to put this together. I mean, I could re read the instructions for this bit, but this is looking very, very obvious. I will read the instructions for the other bits and I might need to wipe this all down before I get cooking with it. That's still in screen, great. Right. Aha. So this is a water reservoir where you actually put water in. You can see there's an actual max sign along here. And you put water in here. And I think they called it like a gas, uh, uh, grease catcher. Uh, so I believe all the grease comes off your cooking and then it lands in here. And then at the end, you've got a bit of water in here. Rinse it out and crack on. Because I think, and I think this is all joined together. So how are you? Hmm, interesting. Oh, and there's a little, seems like there's a little water, there's a little hole there. The water, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if you can see it there. A little hole here where I think the water comes out again afterwards. So I've wiped everything down. I thought I'd move the camera over here to show you how it all fitted together. There's a couple of configurations for this. Uh, one of them is using the griddle or the hot plate. So what you do is, once this is set up, obviously you'd have some water popped in here as well, up to the max line here. Pop this in and this griddle drops into place, right? Then you put the hot plate, the distributor, you pop that on so that it slides on here. And you can see it actually slides in to a little plate here. So it's resting there. Then next, you wanna pop in your plate, which is either this way up or this way up. So if I wanted to do like skillet style stuff, you pop it in. The trick is I try and do this with one hand. Go. Look, that's all fit in there. Bosh, bosh. That's the plate. Then, then that's it. You can get cooking. You've got a water reservoir which catches grease and stuff. And then, yeah, you crack on. Or if you want to have a flat plate, literally just flip this over. Whoopsie. There we go. Yeah, that's one of the configurations. It's a bit of fun with two hands. Uh, the next configuration would be if you want to use the grill plate. This here, you literally pop it on. I think it's this way. Yeah, you pop it on this way and then get it locked into place. You can see with these sections here, locks in. There you go. You can grill away if you want to. And that's the heat distribution plate, which I guess keeps the heat distributed evenly. Uh, that's not the only way you can cook on it as well. You can take this heat distribution pot off, have that there, and literally go straight to using this lid as a wok, which I guess why it has handles on it. So you can actually cook it up on the lid of this, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, you'd think the top of this might get burnt or something, but they clearly would have put something on it to mean that you could cook it. So I guess I need to be doing a little stir fry or putting some veg in there to cook to give it all uh, a go what i was gonna try i was gonna try cooking some meats um 
And I don't know, maybe I'll do a breakfast tomorrow morning with this, or I'll do some meat tonight, or I'll do some like bits of pork and maybe some vegetables. Probably for the pork, I want to use this to get some nice lines on it. Um, and then for the veg, I'd probably, if I was honest, I'd probably use the skillet thing as well, but I might try the flat side, or if I can cool it down quick enough um, and get this going, I might do the veg on this afterwards, or I might do the veg on this first and then do the pork on there. Either way, I'm going to try and cook with the lid and with the skillet because I think it's pretty obvious how this would work. Uh, it's pretty obvious how the heat distribution plate would work because you just follow the instructions, put it all on, but I guess we want to see how it cooks. Right, anyway, enough talking. I'm going to cook some pork on the skillet, but first I'm going to put, cook some veg in here with a little bit of oil and see how the lid takes to being cooked with. It's interesting, that really says in the instructions that raw flame hits that lid. Um, before we do any of that though, I'm going to put the camera back on the stand and we're going to attach that gas canister. Here we are back over here with a gas canister. Has the lid the pop off. That's how it comes off. And then in the instructions, it literally says, push in and rotate clockwise. And, that, and you're meant to do this standing up, I believe, but I'll see if I can do it. No way, is that it? Is that it? That's, <laughs> that was it. It's on and um, yeah, once, <laughs> Once that's all connected, that is easy. That is probably one of the easiest. That's not the gas on, I think you have to push it in. I have never connected something so quickly in my life. And I've only done a few barbecues, but that, the way the camping gas uh, gas fits onto it is very easy and it does say in the instructions even if you're not using even if you've not finished the canister you can take it off so I'm gonna see what that's like sealed up and I'm not saying this makes a difference but I'll pop that on there just for safety. that's very easy I would suggest doing this outside I've done this inside very quickly but I've literally got outside just over there, but yeah. And you know, just if you smell any gas while you're doing this, if you're not using it, obviously safety rules apply, but I'm really impressed with how easy that attached to it. Uh, just gonna double check all the instructions. I've got this right, if there's any extra detail, I'll give it to you now. But I'm gonna go prepare some bits of pork uh, and I'm gonna go prepare some veg. It's gonna be some courgette. We're gonna do in like the wok section of this. And then, yeah, let's get cooking. So here's the finished pork. Juices there. But yeah, here you go. Very easy to cook. Um, here's my plate here. Whilst I'll show you a little bit of my plate. I also cook the Padron peppers on here as well. If you're a vegetarian, shout out to you. Uh, I wanna say in terms of barbecues, ease of putting a gas can on, this was definitely one of the easiest gas canisters that I put on. Uh, it's small, it's lightweight, it's portable. Is it something that you can put over your shoulder? No because there's another um, barbecue that I can put over my shoulder that I reviewed. Is it something that is versatile? Because you've got the wok setting, 
you've got the um, grill setting, you've got the skillet setting, you've got the flat hotbed setting. It's very, very versatile. So yeah, one of the most versatile ones out there. It can stand up on a table. Um, so you will need to elevate it if you don't want to sit down and cook with it or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, probably the barbecue that I put in the back of my car. Or if you had an RV, throw it in the RV if you wanted to do some outside cooking at short notice and didn't want to have a big setup. So there you go, that's our review of this barbecue.